In this video, we are going to take a look at the continuation of the Plantagenet Kings of England, but from 1216 to 1399. If you haven't already, please check my previous video, where we looked at the reign of Richard the Lionheart and King John. For more information on the Kings and Queens of Britain, and my series of videos charting the English and British rulers from 410 to the present day, please consider subscribing and checking them out. Thank you, and on to the video. Upon John's death, the throne passed to his nine-year-old son, Henry III. A regency of churchmen and barons ruled on his behalf until, in 1227, Henry came of age. He insisted on appointing his own councillors. He spent vast amounts of money trying to regain the lost lands in France. To pay for this, he simply raised taxes whenever he wanted to. In 1263, the barons, led by Simon de Montfort, forced Henry to agree to mend his ways, but the king broke his word and the barons went to war. They defeated Henry's army at the Battle of Lewes in 1264. Henry became king in name only. De Montfort really ruled the land, but the other barons soon became jealous of his power. Led by Henry's son, Prince Edward, they rose against him. Henry regained his throne, but it was Edward who took over the government of the country. Edward I, who was Henry III's son, was good-looking, strong, a brilliant leader and a wise king. He made himself popular with his subjects by stamping out corruption. His great ambition was to extend his rule to Wales and Scotland. By 1283 he had conquered Wales. The Scots proved much more difficult to conquer. Though his many victories over them earned him the nickname the Hammer of the Scots, he failed to subdue the country. He died, aged 68, on his way to yet another campaign against the Scots. Edward II could hardly have been more different from his father. Where his father listened to his advisers, Edward depended on the advice of his favourites, such as his friends Piers Gaveston and Hugh Dispenser. Edward's wife was the formidable Isabella of France. She loathed both Gaveston and Dispenser. In 1325 she went to France to join forces with the king's enemies. Her army attacked Britain. The king was banished to Berkeley Castle in Gloucestershire, where he was later most brutally murdered. Edward III was 14 when his father was killed. Until he came of age, the country was ruled by Isabella and her lover, Roger Mortimer. Through Isabella, Edward had a strong claim to the French throne, and he decided to fight for it. With his son, the Black Prince, Edward led the English army to a famous victory at Crecy in 1346. The English also captured Calais. At home, he was popular with his barons. His armies defeated the Scots, and it looked as if the country was in for a period of peace and prosperity. But then things changed. The French won back most of the territory that the English had conquered. Edward grew old and confused. He quarrelled with his parliament. The Black Prince died in 1376. A year later, Edward, a broken, shambling old man, followed him to the grave. When Edward died, the Black Prince's son, ten-year-old Richard, became king. Government of the country was entrusted to a group of twelve men led by his uncle, John of Gaunt, Duke of Lancaster. Richard believed that as king he had been appointed by God and could do whatever he liked. He offended the powerful noblemen, including John of Gaunt, whose son, Henry Bolingbroke, was banished. When John of Gaunt died, his lands were seized by Richard. Bolingbroke sailed from Boulogne to capture them. People flocked to Bolingbroke's side. Richard submitted to him at Flint in 1399. He renounced the throne and Parliament appointed Bolingbroke his successor. Richard was sent to Pontefract Castle, where it is said he starved to death in 1400. 